Welcome aboard all, and this week I've got a very special guest, Buddy LeCue, all the way from Alabama in the United States. We chat about tips and techniques um, in a recent build from a contest where he came second place in the Leo Palladi Memorial build on the HO Scale Model Row Rating Facebook page. Hi, I'm Dads from Model Row Rating Techniques, as you probably know. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to any new people coming on for the first time. We do video podcasts, so cast, showcasing, I should say, modelers from all around the world. If you think you fit the bill or know someone that may like to get interviewed, link below to my email, send an email, and I'll reach out to them. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and also consider joining my Patreon page. Every little bit counts to keep the content rolling. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome aboard, Buddy LeCue from uh, the southern state of Alabama in the United States. So welcome aboard and thanks for coming and talking with me on Model Railroad Techniques today. Thanks, Darren. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of the show. Uh, a big fan of the show and, and watch uh, all of your episodes I can. Uh, lovely. Thank you very much. So the first thing I need to do is congratulate you on your second place in the Leo Palladi Memorial Diorama Contest, which was run on a, a Facebook page called HO Scale uh, Railroading Facebook. So obviously that's how we sort of met each other um, to fill people in on the contest. Uh, my website was used for um, to put the diorama pictures up. Um, it's named after a, a great gentleman in our hobby called Leo Palladi, who's was the administrator of that Facebook page. Um, and unfortunately, just before um, the dioramas were judged, he he passed. So hence why the memorial status in it. Um, I think we need to not take anything away what that gentleman has brought to this hobby. I've personally never met him. However, um, there's not... A, no one's had a bad word against this gentleman. Um, you see some of his posts on the Facebook page, and I'll link this all below um, about the, the the Facebook page and where it's come from. And he was just like a legend within this uh, within this hobby. So, congratulations again, uh, buddy, on your on your contest win. So, tell us a little bit about you coming along to, I suppose, well, let's talk about that for Facebook page to start with, because I think that's important because that's why we're here today, I think. so. Right. Uh, well, first, thanks for the, the congratulations, and I, I appreciate what all you did behind the scenes providing us Thank a you. platform to, to share our work and a, and a unified place for the judges to come see our work and, and judge yeah. it there as well. That was a great platform. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. So uh, that, that sort of came about sort of around January last year. Um, Leo put a, a post up saying – does anyone, can anyone build a website? And I sort of reluctantly put it up because they are, they can be a lot of work. Um, and I said, well, I, I know how to build them. And then I just offered it up, put a forum on and away we went. So I'll put a link to that below. So if anyone wants to see all the photos, because they were the part of the contest was to put eight photos up of the build and a little blurb of about, about your journey on building it. So there was two different um, categories. There was a, a novice and an advanced. And looking at some of the photos, if we didn't have those those categories, you, they were as good as each other to go in any of the categories. They were phenomenal um, uh, dioramas, that's for sure. So now, buddy, if you just want to tell us a little bit about your build and what category you you pitched your diorama at. Sure. Uh, well, I've I'm not a huge model railroader. In fact, I'm I'm fairly young in the in the model railroading. While I'm an older guy now that I've got some disposable income. It's, sure. it's not a cheap hobby, no, but, definitely. uh, I, in searching around, I was able to find the, uh, the model railroad, uh, Facebook page. And shortly after joining, of course, Leo being as welcoming as he is, he, yep. he introduced himself immediately and, and told me the, the contest had already been announced at yep. that time. They were voting on the kits that they would be building. Sure. And he asked me about my modeling career and where I was at in it, and it would would I be interested in building a kit, and if so, which category would I like to be in? Sure. And I had never built a a wooden craftsman kit, a true craftsman kit before, so I said, well, being as my first, I guess I'd be in the novice category. <laughs> and and then he he forwarded me which one in the category to vote for, and I think we all voted for the uh, I didn't know what the ratio was, but most yeah. of the people voted for the bar mills. Uh, Bull Savage yep. kit, uh, the Savage Yard kit. Great kit. It's a beautiful little kit. You're right. 
we had some time prior to the kits arriving. I think the kits were bulk mailed to, to Leo and his wife, Lori, there in Texas from Bar Mills. And so we had some downtime between once we voted for the, the kit we were going to build. We had some downtime before they were actually shipped to us from Texas. So in that downtime, I chose to get another Bar Mills kit, the uh, the little Ravel shipping company kits, the little Bar Mills starter basic kit, I guess it is. Sure, sure. Just to become familiar with some of the, the techniques and, and the materials that would be used in the similar Bar Mills kit. So that was a great benefit. I, I got that kit and, and dove right into it. Uh, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. That building's nowhere near square. Uh, <laughs> But it was it was a learning experience, and a, and for a cheap you know fifteen twenty dollar kit, it was a, a valuable learning experience. Sure, sure. And after posting my work back to to Leo, going, hey, here's where I'm at with that kit. How do I fix this problem or that problem, or how do I get this technique? Him and and Stephen and and you, some of your videos on the introduction to Craftsman kit were invaluable Thank to a, to my second build, which was the the competition kit. Yeah, lovely, lovely. So just to fill you in my journey with that as well i've only built several myself and i watched a, a lot of youtube videos from jason jensen and i don't know if you've, you've seen that gentleman he's just phenomenal absolutely um from the ho scale customs guys over there at wiley the wiley boys from pennsylvania so that's where i got right. my passion for for the kits from and this is where this whole youtube journey sort of started for me so so here we are so they're Craftsman kits are one of those things that they're always put in the back back burner because they're always too hard to build. Like they're, they're these big, scary, intimidating kits. But as you've sort of explained, that if you're willing to throw yourself at a fifteen dollar kit, which is on the scheme of things quite quite inexpensive, boy, you can get some really nice uh, results with really not. I wouldn't say relative ease, but um, with some basic techniques that you can learn from different people online. Absolutely, uh, yeah, and. and Jason was was an evaluate. Some of his yeah. work is just amazing. Oh, I, I can't believe you could get that out of a just yeah. a bare wooden kit <laughs> <That's> box. <right. laughs> and some very basic uh, acrylic paints that he uses. That's for sure. So, that's right. Yeah. So you've you've sort of gone touched a little bit. I like to find out about people's modeling journeys and history. So you've touched on you haven't been in the, the the hobby that long, so to speak. So can you tell us a little bit about your modeling history? Sure. Well, it started probably uh, back as a kid building the 124, 125 plastic model car kits, uh, the NASCAR kits and that. Oh, nice. And But was never really detailing them. You know, you built them yeah. box stock. The decals didn't look great. You know, it was it was a fun, quick, you built it as fast as you could kind of kit just yeah. because you wanted it finished. Sure. And then uh, I kind of faded away from any model building or anything such as that. But then... Uh, Lately, I've always had a passion for model railroading, and and I, I keep reverting back to to model railroading. The the 187 scale just it amazes me at what you can do with the 187 scale in a small yeah, amount sure. of space. But that's right. I don't even have the small amount of space at the moment. But uh, yeah. of course, the dream is the big full finished basement with the wrap around you know hundreds of miles scale miles of track. <laughs> Sure. But that's that's not in the cards for me at the moment. So I just do what I can and build uh, build the small sure. diorama scenes. And, and uh, there's a there's quite a lot of guys and, and and girls out there, not not just the gent the gents, but um, that are just doing that. They're using the 187 platform or scale, I suppose, and building some phenomenal scenes um there's another gentleman that's all he does he doesn't have any trains or any rolling stock by the name of craig brotman if you if you've come across him on right. on facebook as well he's as good as jason jensen but he just builds things a little bit differently um and he uses more different types of products and that's what he likes trying to do where jason sort of is an expert i would think at certain products and he sort of keeps to those to a certain degree um, and right. does a little bit of development. But Craig sort of does things a little bit differently. So if you do see that, and I'll link that one below as well, Craig Brotman. I've had him on the show quite a number of months ago. And he's, he's a reach out to him if you need any any techniques because he is a master craftsman as well. That, um, what, what comes out of that off that man's bench is incredible. So, so okay, we'll move forward to... Um, let me scale my screen here a little bit. So 
let me write down some edit time so so your screen's about to change again in a sec mate so just bear yeah. with me one thing i did forget to bring is your uh your ingle nook <laughs> i haven't brought that photo into all my files well it's it's just a basic ingle nook yeah. track there just a small simple yeah well, switcher uh, but it, it allows a lot of a lot of it does. tricks in it that does. short amount of space yeah it definitely does so i definitely want to chat about that in a sec because it's something that i'm looking at building as well i think so I just have a bit of a play around with to okay we digress where am i you still got it, or I could forward it back no, to no, you again? No, no, I've still quick. got it. I just need to put it in the okay. right file so it shows up on the screen properly. So right. this is the beauty of not this being live. We can have these little chats in between, and I just cut it all out. Right. <laughs> it's really not that hard to do. So. Right. All right. Got that many emails that have come in. Right, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's not liking that. Normally, I can just drag and drop them in. I'm going to get all this done beforehand, but it's been a bit of a rush this morning. Even though... I've well, and that was... Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> that was a late send anyway. That was an afterthought, I think, yeah. on, on both of our parts. That but was, definitely. It made it. Definitely. But as I said, it can... It's easily to get into this, so... All right, so... Can you see that photo? I can, yes. Yeah. Uh, Get it over here so I can actually control it. Okay. Yeah, very good. Got my first edit. All right. So, all right, buddy. So this is your your contest build in its finished state. So you've already touched on the type of kit it is. So um, tell us about one why. How did you sort of move forward and in regards to building this scene i suppose how, how, how did you come about thinking the scene as it as it stands and it's a beautiful little scene you've done a stellar job um well, thank you so how did, did you look at building it from the scene up or you just built the building and then plonked it on a diorama base like something that i would do or you've given, <laughs> it, a lot more, given it a lot more thought well actually the the scene itself is kind of evolved as as the build came along. I had a, a few ideas at how I wanted to approach the structure itself. And then I had some more ideas on how I wanted to approach the whole scene. Of course, I wanted to include some track because we are model railroading. Correct. But I also wanted to include several ele other elements. But then I realized that we had limitations on our, our diorama base. Yeah, the sure. maximum size of the diorama base was 8 inches by 11 inches. Right. That's not a lot of room to right. accomplish a lot of scenes within a scenes. And one side of that, that scene, the opposite side from the train tracks, yeah. I had actually started with some higher, some taller grass with intentions on putting some uh, a pasture scene in with some right. handmade uh, barbed wire fence. Oh, and I some cows that. and that, sure. but yeah. then you realize that it's it's not a lot of space. So the the overall vision I had when it started actually became scaled down as it came together, and and some of the items that got added later, the the little truck between the building and the track, yeah, and sure. and that sort of stuff. That yeah. was an old Concord kit that just happened to be laying near the bench and and got built <laughs> quickly. To yeah. fill a gap, I had a few ideas that I wanted to do with that empty space there, yeah. and and the little truck made the cut. I I looked at uh, 
my initial plan was to put like a yard office. I had an old uh, caboose, an old lifelike, cheap looking caboose that I had planned to age up and, and look yeah. fairly decent. Sure, sure. But it, it became too big for that space. So that space got scaled down into a into a junker truck. So yeah. what the what the final product is and what my original vision was were quite different, but I'm I'm sure. pleased with how it turned out in the yeah, end. It's fantastic. You've done a great job in the little build. So um I suppose what I like about this kit is it's got a lot of different textures. So you've got you've got vertical clapboard, so to speak. You've got horizontal clapboard. You've got uh, what we call in Australia corrugated iron or the, the tin on the side. Um, so there's a lot of different techniques there. And I've, I think you've done a – if this is your first first one, you've done a, an awesome job, that's for sure. Um, Thank you. So – Talk us through some some of the basic techniques, and I'll see what photos up. So that's that's the other side you were talking of with the the old uh, well, almost looks like a the, the old the old bomb car there. Oh, um, twenty nine model Ford, I think it is. Twenty nine model <laughs> Ford, yeah, lovely. So yeah. Just talk us through some of the basic techniques you used on on the walls. Did you stain them up first, and then use a, a dry a, um, like a sponge technique, or just what what sort of techniques did you use? Right. Well, some of the stuff I learned on the initial build, the little starter kit build, was uh, I did it all in a in a sponging technique. Of course, yeah. already at Bar Mills, he he preaches the cheap initial primer. So yeah. Yeah. you you get everything shored up good, you get it braced up good in the right places, and start with your base primer. I used gray in this case, yeah, sure, and then uh, sponged over some some off white for the main square part of that structure. But as yeah. you mentioned, there's several different elements to this build yeah. i actually build it in three different sections yeah. yeah and then bring it all together in the end so sure. you i sponge defect the the center two-story garage portion yeah. the uh left side of that photo with the uh vertical the board and batten siding we call it here yeah that's actually just the bare wood with the uh varying shades of india ink oh. uh the india ink alcohol mixture yeah yeah and a little lighter in places, a little darker in places to add the weather effect. Yeah, that's lovely. And then a, a similar sponge effect over to the, the right side of the structure, which included mostly the corrugated iron, which this is the first bar mills kit that offered that corrugated iron. It's actually preformed for you. I had a few plants. Right. If you, you look at the corrugated iron and they're making it out of aluminum foil and this sort of thing. Sure. But this was the first time this particular corrugated iron was offered in a kit and it's right. it's a fabulous material to work with it it takes acrylic paints amazingly using some of your techniques and and jason jensen's techniques on the on the rusting and aging of that corrugated iron were invaluable sure sure and and to achieve that aged look to it so some some different effects uh the tar lines uh i i'd started with that tar paper roof uh oh. several several options for tar paper roofs out there. Jason Jensen's is, I keep going back to him, yeah. but some of his work with tar paper roof yeah, is amazing. That's my, that's my stock. That's, that's, yeah. it's hard to beat the best and that's, that's, that's pretty right. good stuff. Yeah. But that's not the, that's not the paper that came with the kit. I actually yeah. did the black, uh, the black, uh, construction paper, sure. little, little silver primer paint and then aged yeah. it up. And then the, uh, the tar seams, is actually a mixture of black acrylic paint into some Eileen super tacky right. and, okay. and applied that with a toothpick around some of the seams and where yeah. you wanted some, some tar oh, paper patches. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So did you use the same technique that Jason, because you touched on Jason again, um, where he's almost picks at the seams as well to make it give that real weathered effect and you sort of get that, that gray primer color come through um, to fill people in if they're not aware of what, we're talking about is you sort of start with black construction paper. I give it a, 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 a misting of like a gray primer, automotive primer from the rattle can. And then you, that's sort of your base and you, you go from there from your weathering, then you cut it into whatever size strips you want your, your tar right. paper to be. And, and I took it, I didn't go all the way to the picking effect and aging it quite on the edges. Like he did. I did yeah. take it on the 90 degree board and, and sand the edges oh, in yeah, the direction yeah. you wanted the weathering. Yeah, to sure. kind of get you a, a weathered edge. But that top square roof, not so much because it all weathered at the same. But sure. the side roof on the other side was a slanted uh, tar paper and, and you right. wanted the, 
that sloping effect there on that and yeah. a little more aging on the bottom. And obviously you've gone one step further with this little build just quickly. You've added some lights and I I'm I just love night scenes like this. It just it makes the model pop. It's just it's one of those underutilized sort of facets I think within this hobby. Um some people are really, really good at it. Um I'm not so because I get too much bleed coming through my buildings, but obviously this is all lit from the outside. But um, so yeah, you've done a great job with, with the lighting there. I just I love it. So and that was a whole other challenge in itself. Of course, there were a lot of firsts on this kit for me. Uh, yeah. The electrical lighting system was was no exception. Luckily, I found the gooseneck lights. They were they were pre-made and available commercially. Yeah, lovely. But the wiring system on it was was kind of a new invention for me i was i was trying to figure out a way to turn the lights on and off of course you don't want the lights to stay on all the time but uh i found that a uh i've got a uh, glass reed switch it's wired and glued just under the square portion of the roof right. and i've got a small rare earth magnet that i place in the corner of the front corner oh, of the roof nice. and i activate that reed switch to turn the lights on oh, and just run it nice. off of a uh 2032 like watch battery three amp watch battery yeah that's nice that's a that's a great idea i've never thought of it doing that way that's for sure so also like this little scene you got here it seems to be you know he's packing up for the day and a little like a a story within the scene i suppose more than anything it's like his his wife or his significant others come and picked him up for the day and it's it's quite a nice little sort of my well, eye. and that scene could go either way and in in the people that see it under the night lit sky yeah. see him as ending his day yeah. the people that see it in the daylight see is as, as the distressed lady brought in her mustang Correct. maybe to to yeah. have some service done yeah and, that's, and i didn't think of it that way yeah out. definitely so that, that's that's why i think you know who george celius have you've heard that name probably banded around this hobby right. um the master of creating the scene within the scene within the scene and the backstory and all these little vinaigrette top top scenarios it's uh it's, the mind, the, the mind boggles with this 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 side of thing. It's so exciting. I, I think this part of the hobby, it's just awesome. Right. So here's some more. You have a little lean to. We call them over here, the back here. So, um, so you touched on the the corrugated iron. Is that an actual? Did you say that was a metal or was that the? That's the, actually the paper that came the, with the, the, the kit. The paper version. Yep. Okay. It's it's a little more stiff than than say an aluminum foil would be and a little more forgiving sure. because I think with the aluminum foil, while I've not tried it, I, I hear cautions that it's very easy to, to, to stamp the ridges out of the aluminum yep. foil. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So with this paper, they're preformed and it's a beautiful material to work with and takes paint great. And yeah. even for a beginner, I don't think you can mess it up. If you do mess it up, you flip it over and you try again. Yeah, that's right. Or just recode it and go. Right. Reprime it. That is, and way you go. So. And the the back door that you see there was was a custom fix. Uh, the kit itself doesn't come with that. We yeah. we had some liberties within the rules of the contest that we could add some some elements of sure. our own to the kit. One of those was some windows and doors, or we could even add up to uh, I think twelve square inches of of side structure, scratch built side structure, right. if you would. Sure. So I took the liberty to cut that door into the back. It was just a straight flat wall going mm -hmm. onto a porch to nothing. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I cut in a door for that back porch. The back porch is stock, and that's that's where yeah. it belonged on the on the kit according to the instructions. Yeah. But it didn't have a door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a bit strange, but anyway, that's fine. That's yeah, I love a little feature there. And I see you've gone for the the nail hole effect as well on sort of the left hand side here. So that's. That's always a nice I, little I thing. tried some of those. Uh, yeah. That was my first attempt with nail holes, and I, I tried a couple of different approaches with nail holes, including yeah. the, you know, the number two pencil, yeah. which yeah. became pretty fiddly real quick. Yeah. And then the uh, the little punch wheel is is the way to go once yeah. you get the right okay. straight edge with the little pounce wheel yeah. is is yeah. invaluable. I've I've never tried it myself, but it's something definitely I, I want to get into because I just think it adds that little uh, little bit of uh, more realism, I think, to to the structure. Right. So. So some more. Uh, what do we got? So which which wall is this one? This is the, the far side. This is actually in the in the finished scene. This is the wall with the tires against it. Would be the the far right, looking right. at the front of the scene. Okay. And I went with the instead of nail holes so much. I went with the chipped wood look in the corner there, trying to sure. flick a few pieces of wood off there to yeah. make it look a little more aged and distressed. Yeah, nice. 
So this is obviously a really good example of your your weathering of the the corrugated iron. So um, talk us through. I suppose it's a good photo to talk about how how you did that. Yeah, that's a mixture of about four different uh, colors. Yeah, and and in fact, right here on your channel, there's a great example of of aging this this iron to look like this. It's uh, it's just a basic barely touching sponge effect yeah. with a with a mixture of a few different colors yeah. to to achieve whatever rust you want to achieve sure, sure. and and not to forget the edges because you're cutting this paper this paper comes in a like a six or eight inch strip yeah, yeah. and and you can't forget the edges because weather got to those as well so that's don't right. leave the bare edges that's right i normally i've since learned another technique for the edges i use like a, a 6b pencil which is very very soft yeah. um i learned it from a, a ch an indian chap called uh, Gustav Chatterjee, and he just runs the pencil along it. So it just right. gives a, I tried with a sharpie, but a yeah. sharpie bled too much into yeah. the paper material. Yeah, so but maybe yeah, just try just try the pencil if it. if you if you want if you want to go that far with it. It just takes that because um, I don't know that that particular corrugated iron paper was like, but the ones I've had, it's been white or very sort of like a, a bony type color or khaki color. Right. So it didn't look right. So I just needed to um, get the get that color out to sort of make it blend in a little bit better so well i got a little excited with it maybe went overboard in a few places but yeah. uh maybe the weathering is it weathers differently i guess yeah, yeah. so all right um and that's the the first kit the bar yeah, mill yeah. starter kit that was that was the first kit i ever laid hands on actually and and got introduced to some of the materials and what this is probably uh, I'm I really like signs. Um, it's one of my things. I'm not saying I'm really great at them, but I think they add another level of detail. I know we're sort of away from the the contest build here, um, but I, I put this one in here because I wanted to ask you about your technique on signs because I'm assuming that's just came as a, a piece of paper and you've you've applied that to the wall. But what what how do you use it to to weather it up to make it look like it's been a painted sign, like effectively what you've got there. Well, it, it's, it's right. It comes as a piece of paper within the kit. I, I took the liberty to, to make an additional scan copy, so if I messed one up, I still had the originals from the kit. So it's just printed, inkjet printed onto standard uh, stock paper and then cut out carefully along the lines, but then I take and, and sanded the back of it because you want to yeah. get that paper as thin as possible, yeah, yeah. To especially on this, this lap siding like this, to accept that lap siding. So the thinner the paper, the better. Sure, and sure. sand in the back of it and then liberally coating a 50-50 water Mod Podge mix on yeah. where you want it to go and then applying it. And while it's still wet, take up the rounded edge of the toothpick and, yeah. and get it into those lap uh, sidings. Yeah, okay. And yeah. The, the sharp end of the toothpick will tear it, and I, I did that. Learned from yeah. my, my mistake there. <laughs> yeah, you Use the rounded that. edge of the toothpick and roll it into that that lap side so yeah i have used that that technique with the, the the sanding the back end of it and it's a little bit daunting to start with because you're thinking you're going to go straight through in some places you do but there was one build that i did i just left it and it actually turned out okay that i sort of i sort of dodged a bullet so to speak um in regards to it still looked still looked right if that makes sense with right. regarding when it went on but um yeah, that's a really nice. But as it's as it gets good and wet, you that's I sponged it again just with a yep. soaking wet sponge to yeah. help it get into those gaps. Yeah, yeah. And then I did my final weathering on the building was just some some pastel chalks, some of the darker colors you see, and then the white streaks sure. is just pastel chalks. Sure, sure. All right, so we're back to the contest build. Sorry, we just sort of died. I just wanted to talk to you about those signs more than anything. So because you've 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 taken that technique and you've gone, I think. Obviously, you've learnt that technique, and then you brought it to to your contest build, and you've just nailed it. That's just particularly this sign. I think this one on the side here is just an absolute that's right. a really nice looking sign. Yeah, it gives it that real aged look. If you yeah. want the the painted on sign look for a say a, a metal back sign, I would maybe apply that that uh, paper sure. onto some thin styrene, and then glue the styrene yeah. to the wall if you wanted yeah. that metal hanging sign look. Yeah. And that's when your sharpie technique comes into it to get rid of that, that right. light on the side. That's 
haven't done that, but I've seen Jason do that quite a new, numerous times and Craig. Right. That's how he gets that sort of. So there's the, yeah, you spoke about this, that wall before. So now we're building out the scene with the tyres. So um, did these t- these little uh, detail bits come with the, the, the bull salvage kit? Well, I had a mixture of what came with it. The stacked tyres is actually part of the kit. Uh, yeah. Some of the other detail items in there it's not so much the little rusty car down on the left side the uh, propane bottle you see there on the back porch and the the box crate were were add-ons but the the stack tires the rubber stack tires do come with the kit yes yeah sure sure so we touched on it briefly i suppose at the beginning you've thrown yourself into the deep end so to speak with craftsman kits <laughs> um it's not I don't think it's a basic Craftsman kit because it's got different angles, got different little outbuildings. So you got to be able to join walls, different heights, different sizes. So did you find that sort of, I don't know, when you sometimes you open some of the, the kits up and you look into the box and it's just all these piles of wood and you're going, how the hell am I going to build this thing? Did you find it? <laughs> did you find it daunting at all? Or I'm a little bit get excited and going, "Oh, this is so cool! I just want to get my, want to get into this." So, well, and it was a combination of both, yeah. uh, especially the side we see here that that has the various angles, and you're sanding the corners to yeah. the 45 to get those angles. That was yeah. that was my last thing that I did on the on the structure right. itself. The others were pretty square, straightforward builds. Uh, once I I got the the squares, I'm, I'm using some some one two three blocks or three two one blocks, yeah, whatever they're called, yeah, the the yeah. metal blocks to use for squaring. Sure. My first attempts were were just using the grids on my cutting mat, right. which didn't fare so well. Yeah, yeah. But the the three two one blocks and some magnets and you know rubber bands and that sort to hold it square really yeah. help. But yeah, they do. When you get to holding it not square, <laughs> then it becomes a challenge. <laughs> you 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 need it to be off a certain amount yeah. and how do you achieve that so that was quite daunting but I, yeah. I i was able to pull it off so yeah yeah so obviously we've we've gone away from the the, the build here or it's still part of the diorama so another thing yep. that i really really enjoyed and i'm interested in one what the wood is and how you went about building this grade crossing that was uh an afterthought when i when i saw the, how the scene was going to come together and i saw what space was available as I mentioned, I knew I wanted to include the track, but in including the track, I also had to include a way to get to the garage. Yeah, sure, sure. I had looked at some commercially available uh, crossings, and there's plenty out there for cheap that you can just slap some glue on and throw on your track. But yeah. the goal for this this build, and I, I think uh, and Leo's vision, was to create something. Yeah. The yeah. more creative you can be, the more scratch built, the more imagination yeah. you can have in it. Yeah, sure. So I took that liberty to just take some some stock lumber, yeah. and and built this crossing from stock lumber. I had to sand it down greatly. It was far too tall, but it was yeah. what I had on hand. Right, right. And then wire brushed it. Take the little wire toothbrush looking thing, yeah. and get the wire brush in there and get the the wood grains to it. And these uh, these nail holes you see were actually added with fine tip tweezers, but right. I think it gave it a great effect once it yeah, was finished. Beautiful. Yeah, I love the the wood grain you you're doing it here with the, with the the wire brush. It's yeah, something I've definitely used before, to varying degrees and varying success. But that's really, really that's added a real nice aged effect to it. That's for sure. So, I know you. I watched on when you were putting these up on the Facebook <laughs> and also the forum, particularly the what we call the Harvey wall banger here in Australia, which is <laughs> like the the air conditioning unit that hangs out out of the window. Right. Um, is that another part of the kit or is that something that you're sort of retro, retro added, so to speak, or that was not part of the kit that yeah. nor the gas meter were part of the yeah. kit, but I've had those air conditioners for, I'm, I'm not sure how long I've, yeah, yeah. I've had air conditioners in stock in my, in my junk box for yeah. far too long with sure. nothing to put them on. Yeah. And as this structure came together, I saw that window and I test yeah. fitted that that air conditioning unit in that window, and it was perfect. Oh, hallelujah! So, <laughs> so I was—it's yeah. just a bare metal mold that was yeah. was quite nasty. There was a lot of flashing on it, so I had to do a lot of yeah, cleanup sure. on it. But uh, I think it came out great, and I gave it that dirty look yeah. because this is a dirty place. It's a garage, yeah, yeah. you know. It's 
it's not the the one hanging off my house certainly but uh no, for the no. dirty old garage and the aged weather look i think it came out good just the these white metal castings or any type of casting that just add so much to the scene so much more more texture so that that window in itself without that that's why i asked that i would have thought that would have come with it so um, well, it was actually uh, Bar Mills offers the option, especially on that window. I think the two right. windows on that whole side of the building have the option to be open or closed, the swing out, top right. swing out windows. Okay. And I yep. think some utilized them as top swing out windows and sure. others chose to open the doors as well. So yeah. there's a lot yeah. of options with this little kit. And you can yeah, take it a lot of nice. different ways. Yeah, nice, nice. So more, I've already sort of touched on that, but that's obviously a real close up view with uh, on the, the weathering effect with the the corrugated iron which has come up and there you can see on the right side of that one where i mentioned you know yeah, don't forget paper. the edges you can yeah, see the paper, paper edge there yeah. that if you don't take care of that is it'll it can ruin a small yeah. scene especially yeah, when definitely. you zoom in so we'll go forward here a little bit because i i don't know if you saw it i put some questions briefly out on the facebook page and i did a little bit I late, did a bit a little bit late unfortunately so um so one of the questions came from... I think Patrick asked Patrick, about Patrick Dowd, system. yeah. Um, yeah. On the power poles. So I think it's quite... Um, we'll, we'll buzz through. We'll, obviously, that's where they started. They so we'll yeah. start there and I'll work, work backwards. Um, so talk us through the power pole because power poles are one of those things, again, that people model infrequently, I think. Um, right, but I'm I'm very big for adding vertical texture or vertical detail yes. to a scene because it's just I don't know what it is. It's just something about that utilities and power poles and all that that type of stuff that you've you've hit here um, that really I think added to this scene. So you've got you got where your main structure is, but then you got your tree, and then you got the power pole in there as well, and it just sort of I don't know just ties that whole that whole scene together in a vertical space, I suppose, more than anything, um, if that sort of makes some sort of sense the way I'm trying to explain that. But right. um, it's just a really nice feature, I think, that you've done here. So can you talk us through, obviously, you've started with a stock standard. Uh, is that an Atlas, I think? Um, I, I don't That may be a lifelike. It's, a lifelike. it's a very toy-like structure that yeah. that you all see that, that some glue these down on their scene and, and, are, yeah. and they go with it. So yeah. And that's fine. But I, I took these bare metal, you know, or I say bare metal, these, yeah. these bare stock toy looking yeah. power pole. And with a little creativity and a little sure. cutting here and there and a little guidance, I think it was Jason Jensen again. We're going to yeah, revert back to Jason. Yeah, he I did. Think yeah, he did now, you, now you prompt my memory. Yes, you're right. He did, did something and, similar. And with I it. think he did it very similar with the very similar pole that I started with. And uh, sure. we, we trimmed the pole down and we get it down to the two uh, insulators. And then take the wire brush to the pole to add the wooden texture to it and get some of the the toy-like, you know, the flashing seams and the toy-like look off of it. Yeah. And yeah. with some creative coloring, you can you can make it look like a real wood foam yeah. pole. Beautiful. And then the uh, the transformer and the fuse were again some just uh, yeah. some metal uh, white metal add-ons that we added some some details to. I added the yeah, the sure. jumper wire to it, which was. Holy cow, quite fiddly. It was, <laughs> it's the tiniest of wire that yeah. I, I don't know how many of them I've lost in my carpet that I'll probably find with my foot later. Yeah, oh, but yeah, <laughs> they're yeah, little tiny piece of wire. And sure. then uh, and they colored up the transformer and the switch a little bit. So uh, Yeah, sure, sure. So obviously we'll go right back to that's the obviously the finished product that you got there. So actually I had the this was early on before I added the power line. The finished product actually has a power line oh, to right. it. You're correct. But you're I went correct. with underground power. Uh, I didn't go from the pole or the transformer down to the right. to the uh, building right. itself. And you'll see in the building yep. that uh, the ground, the power comes from underground. Right. So it's coming up from the ground. But I added power line to those two poles. I actually yep. had two poles, one with a transformer and one with not. Yeah, sure. And it was a struggle to find the right scale wire I, I didn't know whether to go with wire wire or cordage yeah. or what and i finally settled on uh black thread right but black thread when photographed up close is fuzzy right okay. so 
I took Mod Podge between the finger and thumb and, and laid yeah. that fuzz down on that thread and let that thread dry. Sure. And it almost became stiff because of the Mod Podge, right. which allowed okay. it to give it that tensioned look without drawing yeah. the, the poles too close together. So Now, there is a product out there, and now I'm going to bring it up. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a it comes in different colors. It comes in a gray um, to replicate cabling of some description or fencing wire. Um, and also like a, like a bony colored color to represent some sort of rope. Um, it's a, it's a very fine elastic. Um, right. when I find it, I will put and I'll buddy, I, I will email you my result cause I've got it out in my, my layout room, um, which is not with me, but, um, so basically you glue it between two areas and if you are to bump it, it won't snap away. It sort of just takes, right. it's like almost elastic and it actually looks really nice as well. So it's obviously an added expense. Um, however, of, I think it's a 20 meter roll or something like that. Ridiculous. Maybe 10. Um, <laughs> you could power the whole, the that's whole right. layout. With yeah, that's that, right. So lifetime supply. that's right. So I went off, I will link it below. Um, I'll write a little note here. And I'll, and I'll let you know to see what it's something you might look at using on, on future builds. Sure. So, all right. So, just let me write that down. I've got to find, for some reason, those photos haven't found. I'll just talk about the ingle nook quickly. On that. Sure. Having a lot of trouble with this today. <laughs> <laughs> Find where you dropped it at. I know you dropped it. I watched yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Normally you can just scroll them across. Um, but for some reason, that should have gone to the next photo, but it did not do that. And I don't know why, but that's okay. The beauty of editing again, which is always nice. All right. Yeah, there it goes there. Yeah. So we should be able to bring it up. Beauty. We'll scale that up a little, just a little bit. Yeah, that was, that was a little tiny. There it comes, yeah. There we go. All right, so we'll write that time down. Very good. All right, so we, you touched on, we'll go away from your, your kit build at this point in time because um, I'm quite interested in, you sent me a, at this point in time you were saying you didn't have the room for a layout, which is a lot of us don't have that, which is which is more than fine. This is where these little shunting shelf layouts really, really come to their own. So you picked up, um, when we spoke beforehand, Ingle Nook, so which is, a little shunting puzzle, so to speak. So you, you've sent this this photo through, um, one that you possibly are looking at. Um, so talk us through what you might do to this scene. Obviously, it gives some sort of idea about the, the structure and the like there. But um, so how you would yeah, build this? this? Uh, would, you, would you build a port scene like this one or something totally different, you reckon? I, I definitely want to include a, a water scene in it, maybe not a, a full-on, uh, you know, port that's serviced by the rail but this this example that i'm looking at is uh has got that port scene available that can be serviced by rail or yeah, sure. or expand on it even further just to make it a a quaint little fishing port but yeah, even the fish you could you could put the fish on the train and and ship to market there's a lot of things you can do in a short amount of space with an ingle nook type plan yeah. like this and it and it scales up or down based on the space you have available i've seen sure. this in in minimal spaces using the little short, you know, little tiny box cars to do the angle nook puzzle, the, the little switch puzzle where you stack the cars in a certain order. But if you expand on that just a little more, then you can, can make 
many scenes you see several structures within this that i could just go crazy building craftsman kits and spend yeah. far too much money on craftsman <laughs> kits to, to fully so. fill this to flesh this scene out but it's a it's a relatively small amount of space that i think i could have a great time Definitely. fleshing out a, a full functioning uh switch and angle nook layout like yeah. that so what size are you looking at if you were to go forward and build this what what sort of size are you looking at building do you think i i think the example there is is just what a few inches uh deep by, yeah, by maybe 15, uh 15 15 inches deep by 80 inches yeah yeah can't. you know so i i could probably do that you know i've seen them as small as the ironing board layouts yeah but I've already got a collection of some some rolling stock and and locomotives that are the full size, you know, the the sure. big boy cars yeah, yeah. that would need a little more space. So I couldn't quite put it in the small space. So I, I'm going to have to go with what space I've got available and what rolling stock I've already got to play with. Of course, yeah. you want to have as as many cars on the table as you can, sure, because uh, because everybody wants to play at the same time. <laughs> but. Uh, I'd like to go as big as I can, maybe slightly larger than this, if nothing else, uh, maybe yeah, deeper sure. to allow me some more scenery opportunities because that right now that's that's where my passion's at is in the in the scenery, not so much as the rail and the function of the rail. Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. And obviously, I see on the the back end of this, you can add possibly to a fiddle yard, or if you are to get some more real estate down the track to, right. to build your your basement empire, that you can fit this. Well, so if not- you build it. If you build it like it's your club standards uh, as yep. a module, yeah, you, could, right. you could plug into a module and, and add a whole other aspect to a module. That's exactly right. So that's uh, really nice. So I don't know if um, I have looked at one of these and I've my I've built my port scene is obviously a little bit larger than that. Um, it's not too dissimilar to this, but just it's got more a few more spurs off it, which sort of have come up quite nicely. So. Um, that's well, I'm, I'm looking forward to attempting water uh the water yep. effects of course there's for every youtube producer out there it seems to have a different type of water effect yeah. and, and some seem to be more effective than others and yeah. some are quite more economical than others you can yeah, you can correct. sink a lot of money into some epoxy yeah. or you can use the the tp and, and glue method so well i'm looking a, forward to trying the different things with water yeah there was a uh, where was he from Marklin from Sweden. I don't know if you've Marklin seen him. Marklin from Sweden, yes. Yeah, he's he does, the, he's TP the, from... the TP man. So, yeah. But during our, our COVID times, that might have been a more expensive way of doing it. I don't know what it's like your part of the world, but people seem to want hey, to hoard the stuff for, for some It was a challenge. You could, you could find a five-gallon bucket of epoxy easier than a roll of TP yeah. at that time. <laughs> There's another gentleman. He's uh, an Australian as well called Luke Towen. He's probably yes, the, love the best. Stuff. Of, he's probably the best, best modeler I've seen do water. Um, he was my inspiration for my trees. The two trees that oh, I built on lovely. my final product were yep. were a product of some of the methods that Luke suggested with the wire and the yep. and the latex finish for the bark and all. So yeah, Luke was a great inspiration on that oh, as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now he's a, a phenomenal modeler. That's for sure. So I'd like to meet him one day. He's a little bit Absolutely. sort of right over the other side of the country to me, but um, some three days drive. So. So I think it'd be worth it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get him on this show. So if you're listening in, Luke, please. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Respond to me. <laughs> to give you a, oh, a little history lesson, I when I was researching the Ingle Nook and the the puzzles, um, you able to see that? That, that all right? Yeah. So yeah. this, which I wasn't aware of, um, is actually the great John Allen's um the grandfather puzzle. of Engelberg, yes. He's the, the grandfather of it. So this was actually, and this is in a museum in Massachusetts, I think. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Yep. Um, I think you're right. And this was pulled out of the the fire, unfortunately, that that destroyed the, the gory and defeated railway. So, and this was what, I don't know if you know the history to this, but um, I thought it was quite fascinating. So he made this little, what they call the time saver uh, yep. layout that he, when people came in, ran his proper uh, empire, model railroad empire, that they would, when they were between jobs, they would come and play with this to, one, hone their skills and de-stress and all sorts of other things. And I thought that was just a fascinating little uh, little insight of uh, of that man and what he did for our hobby, I suppose. 
Right. And there's a lot of disciplines in, in track planning and yeah. execution in that small amount of space as well yeah, with sure. the switches and the crosses. That's, that's right. you got to wire all that, you know? That's right. And also, I, I think didn't go- this one in particular is mechanical, a, a mechanical switch. So. Yes, that's right. And I didn't go into the rules of in- engagement regarding how he ran this, but my understanding is, you know, there was quite strict rules about – you couldn't just run a locomotive right across all the all the switches and all that, and just have it sit there while you're waiting for other um, other wagons to clear or, or it's rolling stock. It's sort of there was quite strict what you could and what you couldn't do. So I might there's definitely a, a website that I, I came across that I'll, I will link below, um, which was quite interesting. If people are interested in the the whole puzzle um, side of things, I might have a read myself to because obviously he based his layer on prototypical operation so to speak so that would have right. translated through to what he did here so well you can't camp out on the main line for sure no that's right <laughs> <laughs> as much as we would like to i'm assuming you know, on the main line yeah you can stack here. a lot of cars there but yeah that's, that's, the, right. that's the a main it's, it's that's, gonna be busy yeah that's exactly right so website inglenook rules all right i'll just quickly where are we quickly find those other um, Facebook questions and we might finish up with those. Yeah, I think one was asking about the road. Uh, one was inspiration, which we yeah. may have already covered. Yeah. And the yeah. other was asking about my road gravel. Correct. Um, I did have it up here. I'm having a terrible time of it this morning. All right, let's bring it over here. It's going to be easier. I love this Facebook page. It's fantastic. Oh, it's really. awesome. I, there's a lot of them out there, but very yeah. few that are, are this good. That's why I can't just go and search on the little bell because I comment so often on this thing. <laughs> I can't, can't find I, it I again. I offer you a suggestion. Go back to the top, and if you search your, you know, Dazzy, uh, just search uh, Dazzy, and it'll come up. The little the search bar down on the right-hand side, underneath the right, up a little to the mm-hmm. right. Right there. You click there and, and type Dazzy and it'll bring up all yeah. your posts. God, should have spoken to you earlier. Ah, oh, there we go. Where'd that go? It should be next down. That announcement is the... I don't know why he does that to me too. That, that announcement from Leo yeah. has always been to the top. Because he was but, the, uh, the owner. He could put his... Because he was the... The, the top chief, so to speak, regarding the right, uh, yeah. the administration. Well, I think Stephen's pinned it since his passing, so that, yeah, that may has. just so be a, a long time memorial to Leo. So yeah, so there's uh there's him, there's me, Ken Hoff, I think his gentleman's name right. is yeah. the other one. So that's not coming up. That should have came up for you. And if you click on the two comments right there, maybe or there click you go. there. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, you went back to the main page. Yeah, so there you go. Too far. So let me just bring that back up. So I. Oops. Get the right time. 59.16. All right. So, so the questions we had um, was from Tyler, which was uh, another another entrant. Within the competition, it's my understanding from memory. There was he was many. in the advanced category. He did was. A, did an yeah. awesome build of a boat shop. I believe That's put a right. third story basement in it. Looked yeah. great. That's right. So there was that many. I, I couldn't keep up with them. So there was so many good dudes. So <laughs> I watched so, with great, great anticipation. Yeah. So Tyler, um, he he has written what's what inspired your scene. So I, I think we've sort of touched on that. Um, you sort of haven't. It was. It's obviously obvious why you've called it to, um, the Leo Pilati or Leo's Leo's Garage. Um, right. So that was that always in the plan. Um, it was not actually. No. That was that was an afterthought tribute to Leo after yeah, his lovely. passing. Uh, it was originally going to be Buddy's Garage for obvious reasons. Sure, sure. And I had toyed with some different ways of making signage. I had printed some some signage on some uh, photo paper for a, yeah. like the old porcelain signage look. 
yeah. and was was pleased with the direction some of that was going. And then we learned of Leo's passing, and yeah. and we kind of paused the contest, and then later extended it to to see it to to fruition for Leo's sake. Yeah, lovely. And yeah. it it was easy choice to to change the name to Leo's Automotive at that point. So yeah, lovely, lovely. So. So obviously we've got spied the scene, so we've sort of we've touched on that. Um, obviously Patrick Dowd, uh, we've talked about the power poles and the infrastructure in behind that, but he talked about um, uh, what you used for the road rocks. So, the, um, so I'm assuming what we call ballast over here. Um, so what did you? Well, that that could be two ways. I assume I took it as meaning the actual road itself, the right. the ballast. Okay. We can cover both real quickly. The yeah, ballast sure. itself was a mixture of uh, it's the wooden Singex fine ballast. I used some gray mixed with some light gray, but I also included some of the Arizona mineral stones right. uh, in mauve color. Some of the tracks around here, with they use marble rocks here in the southeast a lot. And they have a lot of the grays and the dark grays and the light grays. And they even have some pink in it around here. So oh, okay. the mob from Arizona Stone or Arizona Mineral Company sure. added that, that pink hint that I wanted. But uh, yeah, it's about a 50-50 mix of the gray and light gray. And then with maybe 25% more additional of the of the mauve colored. Sure. The road itself was a, another Woodland Saints product. It's the, yeah. the buff. The buff gravel, I think okay. it's uh, number yep. twelve eighty eight Woodland Scenics. Yeah, it that kit comes with the gravel that you see there, but it also comes with a like a powdered dust that you can add to it. I didn't oh. choose to use that powdered dust, but if you wanted to add like lanes within a dirt road, oh, it I had see. that powdered yep. dust to allow you some lanes. I chose yep. to take it a different direction with some darker weathering powders. Yeah, I sure. To yep. add some higher traffic areas, you know, the the front door there is a lot of yep. traffic in and out of the front door with sure. the the grease stain boots and that, yeah. and then some of the the people may be jumping the railroad tracks and scuffing up the the near side of the track there with some tires. <laughs> I didn't actually realise, but this angle you actually put tire tracks on the grade crossing above the looks of it. Is yes, that, that's yeah. that's uh, pastel uh, chalks. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't and, didn't realise that on that. So that looks really really nice, and it's sort of how it comes down into obviously the the gravel here. So that's that's really well done. So I, I hope like, that answered Patrick's question about the gravel. We we covered both. But, yep, gravel uh, growth, gravel or yep, ballast. So we got that. So I think there was a third part to that question, though. Was there not? Oh, we've already spoken about how you went about weathering uh, the right. buildings and the like. I think we sort of sort of concentrated on that a fair bit. So. All right, uh, buddy. Is there anything else you wanted to to touch on, or you yeah. have? Uh, just thanks to everyone who uh, – we had some people that donated some prizes. I was fortunate enough to just oh, – yes, in the last few days, I, I received a, a prize pack, which included some some nice kits. So thanks to those who donated the prizes. Uh, a special thanks to, to Leo and his wife, Lori, for yeah. all they did in the early stages of this and and those who, who followed after Leo's passing to see it through to the end. Yeah, uh, Stephen was a was a great help, and yeah. of course you and and several yeah. others, the judges that uh, that came through to see it to the end. I, I thank yeah, y'all, sure. and I uh, I know uh, Leo's looking down on it and and his approval too. So oh, I think so definitely, and God bless him and his wife for having the strength to to go through with this. Um, I know we very early on the administrators of the. The Facebook page and I only came on after, unfortunately, the passing of Leo um, to help out. And we were very reluctant to add more time to the build because I think we added an extra month to what was initially right. was the plan. But um, we sort of did that to, I think it was more for, for Laurie more than anything. Um, sure. I had never, I'd never met Leo. I've never spoken to either of them um, in person. I know... Um, Stephen and Ken had, and Pat McCarthy, right. I think, was one of the other judges yep. that was quite close with the family. So I do thank them for, and all the judges. Um, I, I'm, initially, I was going to be a judge. 
um, then they thought it was probably better because it was my website to keep me out of sort of with the conflict of interest, so to speak, which I'm so, I am sort right. of glad because how do you judge these seriously? Like, hey, it was tough. <laughs> there were some great builds out there on and both were, sides of the advanced and right. obvious. So, and I know moving forward, we've spoken about probably doing this on a yearly sort of scale. Um, right. moving forward and a few other little bits and bobs we might look at doing for the Facebook group. But I, I love this Facebook group. I, I put a lot of stuff on my, my stuff on here now, even though I've got my own on the back end as well, but I don't post as much on that probably as I should. Cause I just, I just like what, what, you know, the little community that's been created on the right. HO, HO scale railroading Facebook page. I think it's second to none. And we're coming up you know, we're not far off 10,000 members now, which is, you know, we're one of the bigger groups out there, which is great. So, and, and a lot of great talent and, oh, and yeah. they're not, they're not demeaning to the newcomer. If you no. have a question, they'll, no, they'll give you not. a legit answer Yeah, that's where right. a lot of them may be demeaning or are not very forthcoming to the newcomer that's guy right. asking the, the stupid question that gets asked <laughs> over and over. Don't worry, they well, answer I'll... it like it's the first time. That's right. And that would normally be me asking the silly question. So, but we're right there. So you can see that, yeah, that tree just quickly that pops up there now. That's, um, that you talked about Luke Towen esque. That so was the first attempt at the at the wire tree, and I built wow. it based right off the the Luke Towen apple tree that he illustrates yeah, in his example, it. and and I've got the holes in the end of my finger to prove it. It's <laughs> it's, it's quite a challenge fiddling yeah. with the wire, but yeah. I, I think it came out great, and, yeah, and I was definitely. lucky to have some some scaled apples laying around it yeah, that lovely. dusted right on there nicely. Lovely. All right, buddy. Um, thank you so much for talking to me on Model Roro Techniques today. I've, it's been a great insight into your build and you as a modeler, and I definitely would love to have you on back on again at some stage with future builds. You definitely, you know, you, you say you haven't been in this hobby all that long, but you definitely are a talent this, and a testament to yourself with this, with this build. I, I've been reluctant to ask how long this has taken you um, to build because you probably will add to this over the years, I would think, because you, you, your skills probably develop and as like the rest of us and just go, oh, I want to change it up a little bit and I'll do this and do that to it. So it'll be a, for an evergreen sort of uh, diorama is my, my, my pick for you. So thank you so much for, for chatting to me today. Well, thanks, Derek, for having me. I appreciate the invitation and I, I look forward to your interview with the, uh, the other that yeah. place within the contest it, it's a great bunch of guys and I've, I've enjoyed working with them throughout the event yeah that's great so I'll uh, see you next time alright thanks Darren